And it gives me immense delight to welcome our next speaker, uh, Dr. Siddharth Kuwar. I think he needs no introduction. He is additional professor in the Department of Pediatrics. I welcome you, sir. Over to Thank you. Sir. Thank you, Dr. Arpita, for the kind words. So my topic is what is so unique about pediatric trauma. So I have my plan of this talk is divided into two parts. One is talking about what is the difference between the pattern of injuries in the children and the adults. But more than many of these injuries, other than traumatic brain injury, may be uh, either causing uh, shock along with the, and the need to care of specific surgeons or orthopedic surgeons. Therefore, I will dwell in a little bit detail of what is new about traumatic brain injury in the management part. So pattern of injury in the children, there was a study done in 2007 by Richman et al. and Navarro and Cantor. Children were mainly hurt as pedestrians, whereas adults had an accident of motor vehicles. Children have better survival than adults. Children suffer fewer in hospital complications. Duration of ventilation is shorter in children. Smaller body, the force is more widely distributed, making multiple injuries more likely and kids tend to have all of their organ systems injured in blunt, all or most of, more than many of their organ systems injured in blunt trauma. So traumatic injuries may be head injury. So head injury in the children is one of the most leading cause of traumatic death. Neck and facial injuries are common due to the flexibility, flexibility of the spine and wrongly restrained children having a decelerating type of injury may sustain subluxation type of injuries. Spinal trauma, spine usually is uh, quite flexible and not hard in children. Therefore, spinal, the evidences of bigger spi spinal trauma are rare in children. Chest trauma, on the other hand, is maybe very severe because the ribs are pliable and the chest is pliable, therefore they Therefore, the transfer of the forces are uh, 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 transferred to the mediastinum, and therefore the internal organs are or, uh, are endangered, and there are a lot of injuries in chest. Abdominal and genital uh, urinary trauma are much more complicated as compared to that of adults because abdominal wall is uh, the fat is less, the abdominal wall muscle is less developed. And there is some less pack in the abdominal organs and liver and spleen hang into the abdomen more in children than in adults. Orthopedic trauma, of course there is orthopedic trauma but the bones because are flexible. So green stick type of injuries are more common in as the age is lesser like this. Then the sudden deterioration in children is more common. Their tendency is to compensate for a long time and then to decompensate suddenly. The most serious injuries are blunt injuries to the brain, apnea, hypoventilation, and hypoxia occur five times more frequently than hypovolemia and hypotension. In the anatomy part, because the children have smaller bodies, therefore all injuries from blunt impact are more severe, distributed easily to all of the body parts. Large heads they have, therefore a greater proportion of head injury, softer bones, the force is transmitted to internal organs, fewer refractures and more pulmonary contusions. When fractures are present, assume, this is very important. When fractures are present in a blunt trauma, then assume the force was truly massive. Surface area is greater as compared to the body volume. Heat loss occurs at a great rate, greater rate rather as compared to adults. Borslow pediatric emergency tape is a useful tool. It relates to body length to estimate of weight, fluid resuscitation needs, drug doses, and many other all useful kind of stuff. Airways. Posterior pharynx buckles anteriorly with hyperextension of the neck. Thus, it is better to have the head in a neutral position and the so-called advocated sniffing position does not work. This is accomplished by elevating the body. So put something under them, some sort of mat, not below their head, but under the shoulder downwards all of the body. The larynx is funnel shaped, so secretions tend to assimilate it. Nasopharynx is fragile. Nasopharyngeal airways are usually dangerous to manipulate. 
Therefore, trying to put a nasogastric tube or trying to uh, put a nasal uh, say, intubation should be done with. Infant trachea is five centimeter long, grows to seven centimeters by 18 months. Straight laryngoscope is used as the, as the child is smaller. Under tense, usually need a cuffless tube. The required ring is the narrowest part of the airway and forms a natural cuff. Securing the airways. Atropine is needed for intubation. There is a massive vagal response in children as compared to adults with a blood pressure drop in response to anesthetic agents and in 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 intubation. Plus, it happens to reduce secretions. Pediatric rapid sequence uh, intubation, 0.1 to 0.5 mg of atropine is used. If they are normotensive, then the midazolam is used in their dose of 0.3 mg per kg. And if they are hypotensive, midazolam is used in 0.1 mg per kg. Sexamethonium, 2 mg per kg if less than 10 kg and 1 mg per kg if more than 10 kg. So more sexamethonium is needed for the kids who weigh less. Younger they are, the easier the tube is to dislodge when moving them. For example, when the head is turned or when the kid is moved to and from the city table. So be careful. So as we are going as for the scheme of primary say evaluation, so the, the second comes after airway, the breathing. The younger they are, the faster they breathe. Infants breathe at 30 to 40 times per minute. There's no barotrauma with the aggressive bagging. Alveoli are more fragile. So there is more barotrauma with aggressive bagging. Chest tubes, so the bagging should be just suffice to just a little bit move into the chest. Chest tubes need to be tunneled because of the thinner chest wall, so they may come out. Circulation and shock. A shocked child has fewer signs. Poor perfusion is the earliest sign in form of increased capillary filling time and tachypnea. Pulse pressure is narrower, less than 20. Tachycardia, even tachycardia may be a late sign and low urine output and hypotension as Dr. Uh, the earlier speaker, Dr. Anand has said are very late signs and they should not be waited for. After a loss of about 45% of blood volume, the hypotension may occur. Normal unit output is 2 ml per kg per hour for the first year of life. It does not reach adult rate of 0.5 ml per kg per hour until the adolescent has stopped growing. So the concentrating ability of the kidneys is limited. So a lot of amount of urine, if it is not being sent, that means the kidneys are injured. Normal bottom line limit of systolic blood pressure before shock, that is the fifth percentile is given by 70 plus age in years into two. Circulation and shock. Circulating volume is 80 ml per kg. First bolus is with 20 ml per kg three times. Then three to one rule, that is after three boluses along with the start blood, the first bolus should elicit some response when starting the third bolus and the blood, there should be some lasting return to hemodynamic normality. And there is a caveat if there is no response or only a transient response, get them to the operating theater. Chest trauma. If there is chest injury in two thirds, there will be also, there will be also other organ injuries. Mediastinum is more mobile. Susceptibility to tension pneumothorax is greater as compared to the adults and aorting and tracheobronchial injuries are less common. In abdominal trauma, stressed crying children swallow air. So distended abdomens need NG decompression, seat belt injury, means ruptured hollow viscous, and especially bladder with lap belt. So look especially for it if the seat belt injury was there. Solid organ injuries frequently do not need operative management, but hollow organ injuries need to be repaired quickly. So surgical intervention should be sought earlier. CT abdomen is the diagnostic gold and understand. Please hear me. CT abdomen is a diagnostic gold standard. Fast is not far behind and diagnostic peritoneal lavage should only be performed by the surgeon who is going to operate if needed. Indication for laparotomy, transfusion needs 
if the transfusion needs of the baby are exceeding 50% of the kid's blood volume, that is 40 ml per kg, in the first 24 hours, he needs a laparotomy. Head trauma. Head injury is more likely to cause brain injury in kids because skull is softer, brain is softer, more water content, subarachnoid space is smaller, so cushioning effect of the subarachnoid tube is less, and cerebral blood flow is greater. Hypotension is the single greatest risk factor in head trauma, followed by hypoxia. Bulging fontanelles may occur without coma. Vomiting amnesia and amnesia may not mean head injury always. Vomiting and amnesia may not mean head injury always. Persistent or worsening vomiting does need a head CT. <clears throat> Any seizure activity parallels to need of a head CT to be done. GCS is useful. Use the modified GCS for the under force. We all know, so I will skip. Spinal cord trauma is uncommon in the very young. Ligaments and joint capsules are more flexible. Vertebral bodies are wedged anteriorly, tend to slide forward with flexion. Facet joints are flat, head is larger. Angular moment forces applied to the upper neck are greater. So cervical spine X-rays are complicated with pseudo subluxation. C2 is anteriorly displaced on the C3 which is normal and occurs in 40% of the under sevens. Pseudo subluxation can be reduced by having the neck in neutral position while having an X-ray spine done. There may be an abnormal looking gap between the dense and the interior arch. Skeletal growth centers may resemble fractures. Shivora, the spinal cord injury without radiation uh, without radiation association, radiological association, is up to two thirds of them are there with shivora if they are at, if the spinal cord trauma is at all there. Immobilize the spine if there is any doubt. So we can always see the wrong confinement, uh, the uh, wrong confinement of this child with the bed make has. Cause in this child later on is was found with subluxation injuries in the neck. Like this, the upper vertebra moves forward in compared to the lower vertebra, which causes a dent into the spinal cord, which causes many of the injuries, which may include the vascular injuries and other stuff. Then we come to musculoskeletal injuries, long bones of the children bleed less than in adults. Multiple fractures in varying stages of healing should alert you to, is it a case of child abuse? Supracondylar knee or elbow fracture, vascular compromise of the growth plate should be looked at. Growth plates of the groin skeleton are because the epiphyseal plate is present on the ends of the long bone everywhere. And in case the injury is in the, these vicinities, the growth may Hamper. Green stick fracture is common. The abused child, a special word about abused child, homicide is the most common cause of injury. Death in the first year of life, unexplained, should arouse some suspicion about abuse. Discrepancy between the history and the injury. Mechanism of injury does not make any sense. Mechanism of injury told by the parents or whosoever has taken the baby to the hospital is different, which may cause the presentation of the injury. Long time passing between injury and presentation. Injury was held up earlier and the presentation of the child is quite later on the afterthought. Repeated trauma, history changes between guardians. Parent, one of the guardian is giving another history, another parent is giving another history, another parent is giving another history. History of the hospital or doctor shopping. Parents fail to comply with medical advice or leave the child in the hospital. Bruises or fractures in different stages of healing. Perioral, perianal, genital injuries. Long bone fractures in the under threes, which are very uncommon until, until uh, in, an organ of less amount, less 
surface area has in, given impact on the long bones ruptured internal viscera without antecedent blunt trauma multiple subdurals without skull fractures retinal hemorrhages and bizarre wounds like cigarette burns sharply demarcated second and third degree burns and of course the burn is another type of injury so only that the accidental and non accidental burns both are common and the modified rule of 9 should be taken into account the surface area of, of the head as compared to whole of the body changes from birth to the adolescence like this birth the head is about 19% at one year it is 17% at five year it is 14% at 10 year it is 11% at 15 year it is 9% the anecdotal 9% and at adult ship it is 8% psychological considerations are must child must be calmed and treated caregivers and the friends may need assurance psychological effects of severe trauma are can, and they can continue past injury and treatment immediate after injury causes regression and after hospitalization emotional instability best approach to care of injured child is and the parent and also towards the parents is remain calm we have dr lee soothing and reassuring is needed uh, i would just like to interrupt sir i would just like you to remind i would just like to remind you that only 10 minutes are left sir why oh, okay i will try to rush the second part is traumatic brain injury recent advances or changes in the guidelines for management the third edition of the update to the brain trauma foundation guidelines has 22 guidelines nine of which are new there are three documents one is a full document the bible of head, uh, head trauma executive summary containing 12 points of which nine incorporate changes and bedside algorithm based on evidence and consensus the first edition lab which was passed in 2002 lab the bedside algorithm and disclaimer is most of the tables are acknowledged to the articles in the journal of pediatric critical care medicine which are coming the journal of pediatric critical care medical medicine and journal of neurosurgery incorporated all the three which i just now talked about all the three the bible the guidelines and the tables and summary new group of recommendations have emerged all previous recommendation based on the level of evidence related to outcome that is death or mortality till date no definitive pos definite positive study has improved outcome or death in severe tbi in the third brain trauma foundation guidelines two prong recommendations are there the death or glasgow outcome scale based and especially icp intracranial pressure control based there is evidence that the controlling intracranial pressure improves the outcome as against there is no evidence that the, the recommendation based on the death improve the outcome so the recommendations some of the recommendations recommendations for monitoring intracranial pressure monitoring level 3 recommendation is to improve overall outcome use of icp monitoring is suggested it may not be possible hottest the intracranial pressure monitoring is the hottest topic on globe as far as trauma people are concerned feasibility may not be there or almost everything is done but whatever we do is actually almost everything is done is based on icp directly or indirectly icp based care without the numbers whatever we are giving is icp care based without the numbers and even this icp care based without the numbers is on the level 3 recommendations by the tbf the most centers even if icp is not monitored by massive methods in most cases but at least a few are invasively monitored by academic or force purposes it is also strongly monitored by repeated ct bedside mri or fundus examination we'll talk about a bit later advanced neuroimaging again the recommendation of level 3 is to improve overall outcomes the the, the <laughs> pressure of the brain monitoring is used but if if it is used at all it should be maintained more than 10 mm of mercury done by a lycox monitor but this is not presented most of the advanced center so let's go ahead two important neuroimaging recommendations again one is to improve overall outcomes 
excluding the possibility of there is this is a negative recommendation excluding the possibility of elevated icp on the basis of normal initial 0 to 6 hours injury ct scan examination it is not suggested to have ct of comatose pediatric patient second of the same level 3 the recommendation is routinely obtaining a repeat ct repeat ct scan even after 24 hours after the admission an initial follow up is not suggested for decisions about neurosurgical intervention unless there is either evidence of neurosurgical deterioration or increasing icp update recommended recommendations for thresholds to level 3 group recommendations for overall in treatment of intracranial pressure triangulating is sort of 20 mm of mercury although we do not measure it directly but another recommendation for threshold of cerebral perfusion pre pressure treatment to maintain a cerebral perfusion pressure is at least minimum of 40 mm of mercury and a cpp target between 40 to 50 mm of mercury even suggested to ensure that the minimum value of 40 mm of mercury is not breached now how to do know about cpp we can we as we all know that the cerebral perfusion pressure is equal to is equal to map minus icp and minimum of 20 icp should be there therefore minimum of 60 to 70 map should be there so as to cpp may be 40 to 50 so it's easy so we should concentrate upon map in case we are not able to measure cpp as well as icp hypertonic saline 3% level 2 and level 3 recommendations level 2 recommendation is a bolus of 3% bolus of 3% saline 2 to 5 ml per kg was the only therapy that helped improve cpp cerebral perfusion pressure level 3 recommendation is 3% hts as a continuous infusion apart from adults now there is evidence of improvement in children too for use and benefit by using 23.4% saline for bolus caution is sustained increase of sodium above 160 to 170 may lead to endotheliopathy thrombocytopenia pulmonary complications and even thrombotic complication there was no definite evidence about benefit from mannitol hyperosmolar therapy again a level 3 recommendation called for icp control bolus hypertonic saline 3% is recommended in patients with intracranial hypertension Re recommended effective dose for acute use range between 2 to 5 ml per kg over 10 to 20 minutes this was a publication which did a research about uh, complete uh, comparison between different pharmacological agents so hyperosmolar therapy level 3 for icp control level 1 was, was continuous infusion of hypertonic saline is suggested in patient with intracranial hypertension suggested effective dose as a continuous infusion of 3% saline ranges from 0.1 to 1 ml per kg of the body weight per hour administered on a sliding scale the minimum dose needed to maintain icp is less than 20 mm of mercury suggested but sliding scale we can only use as we are seeing the cerebral perfusion pressure because we may not be monitoring icp bolus of 23.4% hypotonic hypertonic saline is suggested for refractory icp the suggested dose is 0.5 ml per kg with the maximum 30 30 ml safety recommendation in the context of multiple icp related therapy is avoiding sustained that is more than 72 hours serum sodium more than 70 as we talked about earlier however we have talked about many at all but the adapt this uh, this uh, uh, this work is still on and when the, uh, the adapt trial will come maybe we have some useful recommendations about many at all fentanyl and midazolam midazolam are ineffective in reducing episodic intracranial hypertension in severe pediatric traumatic brain injury the paper was presented and on the basis of this paper many others analgesic sedative and neuromuscular blockade level 3 for icp control with use of multiple icp related therapies as well as appropriate use of analgesia and sedation in routine icu care avoiding bolus administration of midazolam and or fentanyl during icp crisis as suggested this is a level 3 evidence due to risk of cerebral hypoperfusion in the absence of outcome data specific indication choice and dosing of analgesic sedatives and neuromuscular blocking agents should be left to the treating physician 
Based on the guidelines from the US Food and Drug Administration for long continuous infusion of propofol for either sedation or the management of refractory intracranial hypertension is not recommended. Updated recommendation on treatment seizure prophylaxis for seizure prevention, clinical and subclinical seizure prevention, pre prophylactic treatment is suggested to reduce the recurrence rate of early seizures within seven days post trauma. At the present time, there is insufficient evidence to recommend levetiracetam over twenty time based on either efficacy in preventing earlier PTS or toxicity. Temperature control level two to improve overall outcomes. Prophylactic that is moderate thirty two to thirty three degree hypothermia is not recommended over normal thermia to improve overall outcome. But the same is recommended if we have to move to TL two therapy. In the refractory, hypo, refractory uh, say increase in intracranial pressure, and for ICP control moderate, that is 30 to 33 degrees centigrade hypothermia is suggested for ICP control. Safety recommendations: If hypothermia is used and rewarming initiated after tier two therapy, it should be carried out at a rate of 0.5 to 1 degree centigrade over 12 to 24 hours, or slower to avoid complication. Safety recommendations too, if phenytoin is used during hypothermia, monitoring and dosing adjusted to, to minimize toxicity, especially during rewarming period is suggested. Barbecue rates, level three for ICP control, high dose barbecue rate therapy is suggested in hemodynamically stable patient with only with the refractory intracranial hypertension, despite when the maximal medical and surgical management has failed. Safety recommendation when high dose barbiturate rate therapy is used to treat refractory intracranial hypertension, continuous arterial blood pressure are required because cardio respiratory, continuous arterial blood pressure are required because cardio respiratory instability is common among patients treated with barbiturate coma, and hypertension is one of the risk factors for causing death. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Just, just last, just for two slides. Okay, Decompressive craniotomy, level three for ICP control. Decompressive craniotomy is not suggested as prophylaxis, but it is suggested to treat neurological deterioration, herniation, or intracranial hypertension, refractory for medical management. Nutrition to improve overall outcome. Use of immune modulating diet is not recommended to improve overall outcome. Initiation of early internal nutrition support within 72 hours from injury is suggested to decrease mortality and improvement outcomes. Thank you for your patience. I had to rush. I'm sorry. This one not.